Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Sampson from Brigham Young University, and this is a basic introduction to PCN analysis. The case that we'll use in this description, in this introduction, is Malawi's Pizza Catering. If you don't have a copy of it, instructors can obtain a copy from my website, services.byu.edu. Your mission is to document a service operation, and in the, this we're going to study Malawi's Pizza in this case. Identify sources of value, identify process problems, which could be things such as inefficiencies and other costs, potential service failures, flaws in the customer experience, and so forth. We'll also explore possible process improvements and identify opportunities for innovation. Now this seems like quite a daunting task, but we it's very possible because we have a tool known as PCN analysis. There are a number of steps in PCN, anal anal PCN analysis, but we're going to look at four basic steps. Number one is to identify systems, entities, and roles, to document key processes. Number three, assess the value propositions. And four, generate strategic improvement alternatives. So let's start with the beginning, identifying system entities and roles, and let's look at the Malawi's Pizza Catering case. In the case, it talked about a number of roles. In this case, we're going to look at uh, catering, say, a wedding event. So we have the principal individual, the entity that is uh, commissioning the event and probably providing payment for this event. We have perhaps an event planner, somebody hired to provide planning expertise in the event. We have the caterer, in this case will be Malawi's Pizza. We have the venue host that the caterer obviously will have to interact with to provide the catering. We have also the event attendees. And they might interact with the planner, but certainly will interact with the venue host. So that's some of the entities involved in this case. Number two, document key processes. The tool we're going to use for that, as part of PCN analysis, is a PCN diagram. There are some basic elements of a PCN diagram. They include a process entity, a process domain, process regions. So let's look at some of these elements. A process entity is, as we've talked about before, any entity that may influence or make decisions about process steps, control process steps. And for Malawi's, we're going to look at the caterer as the uh, process entity to first focus on. This next diagram looks like a building. This is a process entity as part of a PCN diagram. It's not really a building. What it is is a represents an entity that has a process domain. The process domain includes all processes that are directly performed, directed, controlled by that entity. So for Malawi's Pizza, the process domain might include a number of steps in the process. So for example, Malawi's Pizza has to develop recipes. Once they develop recipes, they might identify the ingredients in those recipes, negotiate a supply contract with some supplier, uh, forecast the supply needs, ordering supplies online, they might retrieve, receive supplies from a supplier such as Cisco. They would maintain the supplies in a stock room and maybe with some information systems. They would then, uh, on the front end of things, the customers might uh, order a pizza. So they take an order from a customer, they cook the pizza. Now obviously to cook the pizza they have to have the ovens preheated, so they preheat the ovens. They also, to cook the pizzas, have to of course develop the recipes and maintain the supplies. Then they serve the pizza. So. This is examples of a process within the process domain of Malawi's Pizza, because Malawi's has control to some degree over each of these steps. Now this shaped roof, the triangle of the roof, actually suggests the degrees of control. We have three regions in the process domain. At the extreme, we have the region of direct interaction. These are steps that involve interaction with another entity, either a supplier or a customer or so forth. A little closer in, we have the region of surrogate interaction. This involves interaction not directly with the entity, person to person, but interacting with a resource of another entity. So for example, ordering supplies online. On the left there, you're not interacting directly with the supplier, but interacting with their website. Or cooking the pizza. You're not actually cooking the customer. You're cooking the customer's orders based on their information. Finally, in the center of the uh, entity's process domain, we have the region of independent processing. These are steps that are the entity controls and they're not involving any interaction with another entity. So we have these three regions of a process domain. As I suggested before, this roof shape, the triangle at the top, points out there's different degrees of process control. Steps in regions of independent processing have maximum control of that, by that entity, 
Whereas as we move to surrogate and to direct interaction, the entity has to cede some of that control to other entities. So in summary, we have direct interaction, person to person. We have surrogate interaction, person to resource. It can be information, it can be belongings and so forth. And finally, independent processing, which means the entity is acting on resources that they own and control directly. So back to our PCN diagram. This is the beginnings of a PCN diagram for Malawi's Pizza. Now, of course, this is just one entity here, and service processes involve always more than one entity. So we might look over here and see there's another entity which might be the supplier. And they have a process domain and all types of processes, some of which might interface or interact with the processes in Malawi's Pizza's process domain, and some which might be independent. Also on the right here, we have the region, a process domain for a customer. In this case, the customer has steps they do. They wait to be seated, they review the menu, and so forth. In fact, let's slide this over and see what's going on in the customer's process domain. Now look at that. Independently, the customer is developing an appetite. Subsequently, they might be, to the process, they might be eating leftovers and so forth. So we see here in this uh, two-entity PCN diagram, we have some of the steps that are in the pizza restaurant process domain and other steps that are in the customer's process domain and some that are shared between the entities. So let's go to our case now, Malawi's Pizza Catering, now that we've been through some fundamentals of a PCN diagram. And we're going to create a PCN diagram based on information from the case. So the case has quite a detailed description of different aspects of the delivery of the catering service. So here we have on the left Malawi's Pizza and on the right we have a client. It could be an event planner or it could be a principal individual if it's somebody doing their own planning. So Malawi's Pizza and there's the customer there. The customer needs catering, the client. They explore alternatives, they call Malawi's that's surrogate interaction because in that case I'm saying they're calling it's they actually making the phone call. But once they talk, uh, get on the phone, that's direct interaction. The, I put this on the left side of direct interaction because it's really instigated by Malawi's Pizza. They ask about the event date, the type of event, the number of people attending. Then the customer provides the event information. They check the schedule, the Malawi's person. Is that date available? If no, the person has to explore other alternatives. If yes, they arrange a meeting, again through direct interaction, then the customer waits independently. They don't wait, um, I guess they could wait on hold, but in this case they're actually waiting independently from the provider. They discuss menu options and then at the time of the meeting, and they maybe do some taste testing, as described in the case, so this might actually be at a Malawi's restaurant. Uh, the surrogate interaction here, they calculate the quantity. They do that without necessarily interacting. It's not a negotiation at this point, but it's the uh, Malawi's person actually making these decisions based on the selections of the customer. So that's why it's surrogate interaction, acting on customer information. Uh, they determine the price based on their judgment and the uh, price schedule and so forth. They then discuss the price. If the price is acceptable, the customer will make that decision. If not, then the customer has to explore other alternatives. If it is acceptable, then they book a catering engagement. So this is kind of the uh, planning part of the process. Now, we're going to go into a little more detail here to provide more examples here, but typically a PCN diagram for a class assignment might be just one page or maybe a couple of pages. Uh, here they record it in the catering book. Oops, sorry, I forgot that important step. Uh, let's go forward in time now to the pr food preparation and delivery process. And the case described this is that Malawi's will actually assemble the pizzas. I put this as surrogate interaction because, of course, they're assembling the pizzas to order. They par cook the pizzas, described in the case. They load food and supplies onto a trailer. And, of course, they have to maintain this trailer and this mobile oven. There's a picture of it there. And uh, the arrow suggesting that they need to do this previous to loading food and supplies on the trailer. They drive to the venue. They, is there a clear parking space? If there is, then they can park the trailer. If not, they probably have to discuss alternative parking locations with the client and then park the trailer. They unload the trailer. That moves to, I put a, a flowchart connecting indicator here, symbol A, and that goes to another part of the process, a continuation, which is 
They then set up the portable kitchen, locate, uh, they see if the serving area, the place to serve the pizza, if that's obvious where that should be located. If yes, then they can set up the serving area. If not, again, they'll have to discuss serving location with the client, and direct interaction. They wait for the event to start. The case points out they usually arrive a little bit before events starting. Then they heat the pizzas, they take the pizzas to the serving area, which could be, you know, somewhere hopefully not too far away. The customers then eat the pizza. Now, in this case, I've been a little ambiguous because I was describing the customer as the client, but really in this case, it would be another entity, which would be the client's customer, meaning the guests coming to the event. And uh, potentially, they would monitor pizza consumption. Uh, this is, I put in direct interaction because the case points out in some cases people will come and ask for a specific type of pizza and so that might be an interaction step there and then they heat those pizzas and so forth. And finally we get to the clean up and payment process, the last part of this. The uh, Malawi's people clean up the portable kitchen, they load the trailer, they determine the actual number of pizzas consumed and use that to prepare a final invoice and present the invoice to the client. Here is your invoice and the client then provides the payment. It could be a credit card or a check. <coughs> and then they return to the store, the Malawi's people, and uh, unload the trailer. And at the same time, we assume the client or their hired worker, somebody else, will clean up serving and eating tables. Okay, so we've identified systems, entities, and roles. We've documented key processes in a PCN diagram. Uh, for this next part, I'll show how to assess value propositions. This is going to be a very basic example here. There are other examples in readings and in the book as well. So, so here we look at this first part of the process, the planning part of the process. And uh, in the book and in other instructions, it describes how we indicate value with plus dollar signs for monetary value to the provider, typically, and the smiley faces for positive psychological value to customers, those things that make customers happy, that help engender loyalty, and so forth. So a few examples of that. One example would be booking the catering engagement. That's probably a very positive value that could be uh, achieved when they have that engaged. At this part of the process, there's actually no monetary value taking place. Uh, also costs we represent by a negative dollar sign or monetary sign or frowny faces. So, well, there's probably going to be a monetary cost discussing the menu options and the taste testing. That's uh, the case describes how that can be somewhat of an arduous process at times. Uh, customer or client cost might be having to wait for the meeting because if there's time, there might be anxiety about whether or not the planning will go well and such. Uh, next part of the process, again continuing this, we might see par cooked pizzas. That could be value to the client because they know that the pizzas will be prepared with excellent ingredients and so forth. The customer is aware of that. Uh, maybe a cost would be maintaining this mobile oven, which uh, the case describes could be potentially costly. Uh, continuing in the process, the food preparation and delivery, we might have eating the pizzas. Obviously, that's going to be a very positive psychological value because Malawi makes fantastic pizzas. And there might be a cost waiting for the event to start, labor costs of having idleness there, as an example. Again, I'm just giving a few examples of some of the value and cost. Finally, in the cleanup and payment process, there might be psychological cost or uh, concern when they receive the invoice if it's not exactly what they thought it would be. And of course, monetary payment. Uh, to Malawi's at this point in the process. So this combination of uh, value, monetary and non-monetary value, and non-monetary and uh, monetary costs constitutes the value proposition. Again, described in greater detail, particularly in the book in Chapter 4. Finally, we generic strategic improvement alternatives in this basic PCN analysis. So that might include improving economies of scale, improving customization, uh, improving efficiency, improving scalability, improving consistency in the product and the service, improving quality, and in general improving value. So back to our diagram, I'm just going to give one very brief example and then your assignment will be to try to find other examples that we could do this uh, identifying process improvement opportunities. In this case, let's look at assembling pizza step. So in this uh, base design of the process. This was done in surrogate interaction. That means that the pizzas were assembled based on a customer order. What are alternatives to this? Well, one alternative might be independent processing. 
they could produce these things in some centralized warehouse and Malawis could just ship these to each store location that could be used in catering event. This could be done well in advance of a catering event. That would be independent processing, not based on a customer order. Or another alternative could be direct interaction. Maybe the pieces could be assembled involving uh, the principal individual or people uh, recruited by the principal individual, a more interactive process. Or perhaps surrogate interaction. Maybe the uh, clients could be provided with equipment, that Malawi's equipment, that the client could then use to assemble their own pizzas. That's another alternative. So we've looked at four different alternatives. Which is better? Well, that is your mission. Your mission will be to identify systems, entities, and roles. That's already kind of been done in the case. To document key processes. Uh, these PCN diagrams in this video presentation are available to instructors if they want to distribute those if people want to use that as a basis, or you can create your own PCN diagrams based on information from the case. To assess value propositions, that's the smiley faces, the frowny faces, dollar signs, the negative dollar signs showing monetary costs. And then generate some strategic improvement alternatives. So take process steps and ship them across the regions of the process domain to accomplish maybe some of these objectives. Now, uh, for your strategic improvement alternatives, you need to explain and justify or at least be prepared to explain and justify why you think this is an improvement, and I encourage you to keep it simple. I do provide a summary sheet on my website at httpservices.byu.edu that will review some principles of PCN analysis. Now, of course, if you have the book, you have the best uh, information about PCN analysis and some of the details about how to do this. So, good luck with your process analysis and improvement, and have fun.